scream, they're here. George, John, Paul and Ringo. The monarchs of Merseyside Town. On the 9th of February, 1964, the Beatles would perform on the Ed Sullivan Show for 70 million live viewers, which was almost 50% of the population that owned a TV in 1964. 20 days before, Capitol Records would release their first American album on their label, Meet the Beatles, which looked a little different than the original UK version with the Beatles. And today we're going to be looking at the differences in the albums and why they were different. First off, why were the albums different? Thank you, folks. Well, to understand this, we have to look at the way albums were constructed in the U.S. In the U.S., it was more common to have singles released earlier on the album, while in the U.K., singles were traditionally not released as part of the album's track list. Also, it was more common to have fewer songs on the U.S. albums. U.K. albums traditionally had around 14 songs, and U.S. albums had around 11 songs. Now, how did this apply to the Beatles' albums? Well, Capitol Records would do a whole variety of ways to convert the Beatles' albums for American audiences, and to take a close look, we gotta look at each album's track list. The first Beatles album, Please Please Me, was initially released by the record company VJ with practically no changes to the album. After this, however, VJ would go bankrupt, leaving Capitol Records to release the Beatles music in the US, starting with Meet the Beatles. Capitol would remove five songs from With the Beatles and add one from Please Please Me, I Saw Her Standing There, and add one single from the US, I Wanna Hold Your Hand, and the UK single, This Boy. The cover would also be changed by bringing in bigger typography and a bluer image. The the next album Capitol released is the Beatles second album, which is really the Beatles third album. For this album they took all the leftover songs on with the Beatles including Roll Over Beethoven, Money, You Really Gotta Hold On Me, and more. They would grab the B-side of From Me To You which is Thank You Girl, the first two songs off the Beatles EP Long Tall Sally which included the title track and I Call Your Name, and a song from their upcoming album and movie A Hard Day's Night, You Can't Do That. For the album cover, they would do a photo collage of the band with the pictures having a sort of orange tint to them. Later in the year, the Beatles would release the movie A Hard Day's Night and the album A Hard Day's Night in the UK. When the album was released in the US 14 days before the UK album, there was quite a few changes. For the track list, they would take 8 tracks from the UK album of A Hard Day's Night, with the other 4 tracks being instrumentals. For the album cover, it would feature the Beatles in the same vein as the UK album cover, except only having 4 photos and having a red background. This cover also kind of alludes to the Beatles' final album cover for Let It Be, but we'll get to that later. Not too long after the album came out, in fact 24 days after the album came out, they would release something new, an album I actually own on vinyl. For the track list, they would add 7 tracks from A Hard Day's Night, 2 songs from the Long Tall Sally EP, and the German version of I Wanna Hold Your Hand. For the album cover, it would be a photo from the Beatles' performance on The Ed Sullivan Show. Next album release that was released 10 days before Christmas of 1964 was Beatles 65. For the track list, they would add 8 songs from the Beatles UK album Beatles for Sale, 1 song from A Hard Day's Night, and the single I Feel Fine with the B-side She's a Woman. For the album cover, they would take photos from a photo session with photographer Robert Whittaker, a name you'll hear later. Next album would be the early Beatles. This is just the Beatles' first album, Please Please Me, but the album cover is the back cover to the Beatles for sale. The next album brings the great naming skills back for Beatles 6, the Beatles' seventh studio album in the US. For the track list of this album, they would take the other seven tracks from Beatles for sale, the B-side to Ticket to Ride, Yes It Is, and two songs from Help, You Like Me Too Much, and Dizziness Lizzy. For the album cover, they they would take a photo of the Beatles and a quote over the track list saying the world's most popular foursome. Next album released would be the US version of Help. This release is more of a soundtrack and you can see this in the track list. It would feature 7 songs from Help, all of which were featured in the movie, and 5 instrumentals. The album cover would change the way the Beatles are positioned on the cover as well as making the photo black and white. The next album would be Rubber Soul, the first US album since Meet the Beatles to feature the original cover or a variation of it. For the track list, they would take 10 songs from Rubber Soul, Getting Rid of the Four Songs, Drive My Car, Nowhere Man, What Goes On, and If I Needed Someone. They would also add the two songs from Help, I've Just Seen a Face, and It's Only Love. Like I said before, the album cover is practically the same, except for saturating the image and changing the color of the Rubber Soul logo from orange to kind of brown. The next album cover is probably the most iconic album cover of the US discography, Yesterday and Today. When the album was originally printed out, it would feature a picture taken by Robert Whittaker, featuring the Beatles dressed in lab coats, covered in disembodied baby parts, and meat. 
when the album cover would come out in the U.S., people were taken aback by the photo. You know, on your uh, album cover that was banned, I mean, whose idea was it? And yeah, what, the photographers that took it. And what was the, I mean, was there well, any meaning behind it? Though. Capital would then recall as many albums as possible and change the cover to a stock photo of the band. This would lead to the Butcher cover, as it's known to be a rare collector's item for fans, reaching multiple thousands of dollars in price. For the track list of the album, they would take the remaining songs off of Rubber Soul and Help, three songs from the upcoming Revolver album, and the double A-side single We Can Work It Out and Day Tripper. One month and 24 days later, Capitol would release the US version of Revolver, the last album to be changed by Capitol. For this album, they would change practically nothing about the Grammy-winning artwork by Klaus Vormann. The track list would also have nothing changed except for the removal of the three songs Capital put on Yesterday Today, I'm Only Sleeping, Andrew Burke and Sing, and Dr. Robert. The next album would be Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the first Capital album to have nothing changed, except for the running out groove of the vinyl to not feature the sound on the UK version. The next album, though, would be Magical Mystery Tour, the soundtrack for the made-for-TV film made after the Beatles manager Brian Epstein's death, an idea he approved of before his passing. In the UK, it would be the Beatles' first and only double EP with songs only made from the movie. In the US, the album would comprise of the double EP songs and the past three singles on the B-side, including All You Need Is Love, Strawberry Fields Forever, Hello Goodbye, Baby You're a Rich Man, and Penny Lane. This is also the only US album considered to be part of the main lineup after the Beatles' discography would be transferred to CD and later digital. After this, all Beatles albums would have no changes until their final album in 1970. After this, multiple compilation albums would be released including the Red and Blue albums, Hey Jude, and more notably Past Masters, comprising of every single they would release until they broke up. With all that wrapped up, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was one of my most comprehensive and researched videos I've made. But with all that out of the way, my name is Aiden, and I'll see you later.